everyone, it's Kathy, and today I want to talk to you guys about measuring your macrame ropes. Now, as a beginner, I know it can be really confusing and pretty stressful trying to figure out how much cord you need to measure for your different projects. So I'm going to walk you through a few tips and tricks to help you grow the confidence you need to be able to do this. Now before I jump into those tips and tricks, I want to let you guys know that there is no super strong method to figuring this out, okay? It's a lot of trial and error, and even advanced macrame artists sometimes get the math wrong when figuring out how much rope they need. But the more macrame you do, the bigger intuition you're going to get and the more confidence you're going to get with knowing how much rope you need for so-and-so projects. But with that being said, there are a bunch of tips to help you get started on this journey to make it a little more easy and to ease some of that stress because I know it's no fun to feel like you're wasting rope or that fear that you might run out of rope in the middle of a project. So the first tip I want to share with you guys is a very, very general guide that almost every macrame artist uses. And that is that you should cut your ropes for your projects eight times the finished length. Okay, so if you want to make a wall hanging that is one foot long, you're going to cut each of your ropes eight feet long. Now, this is not very precise at all, but it is a very helpful start. So to make this just a little more precise, there is something you can do, and that is to use a little formula where you separate your knotted section and your fringe. Okay, so what I mean by this is you're going to calculate only the knotted section in your wall hanging by eight, and then you calculate your fringe by two. And that's just because you're doubling your ropes over with that lark's head knot, so you wanna take that into account, okay? If you don't double your ropes over at all, you're only gonna multiply things by four and fringe by one, okay? So, I know that sounded probably extremely confusing, so let me share just a little formula that's going to make this a little easier to understand. Now, that formula is going to be A times 8 plus B times 2. Now, in that formula, A is going to be the knotted section and B is going to be your fringe. So, let's break this down even further so you can understand it a little more clear. Let's say you want to make a wall hanging that is four feet long, okay? And in that wall hanging, you know you only want to have a fourth of that be fringe. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the remaining three feet of that four feet as your knotted section. You're going to plug that three into your formula and do three times eight. Then you're going to take that fringe section, which is going to be one foot of rope and you're gonna plug that into the little B section on your formula and take one times two. Now you get those two sums, which is 24 and two, and you just add those together to get 26. That means that in your project, you're going to measure every single rope 26 feet long, and that will account for the knotted section and the fringe in your project. So let's break this down again with this example of this wall hanging that I have made. Okay, so in this wall hanging, I have a clear knotted section and a clear section of fringe. Okay, so in this wall hanging, my, my total wall hanging is 13 inches long, with that knotted section being 8 inches and the remaining fringe being 5. Okay, so plugging those numbers into the equation and then adding everything together, I should have cut my ropes for this project 74 inches long. Now that comes out to just a little bit over 6 feet long. 6 feet 2 inches to be exact. Okay, so for this specific project, I actually cut all my ropes about 7 feet long. That's a little over than what the equation said, but it's pretty close. And I did have some extra fringe that I had to end up cutting off. So if I had followed that formula, it would have been even more accurate. Which brings me to another point. It is always better to overestimate than underestimate, okay? If you have a lot of fringe left over that you have to cut off, don't feel like you're wasting rope, okay? I promise you can reuse those scrap ropes. 
If they're long enough, you can make keychains, you can make bracelets and earrings and any of those fun, smaller projects. Okay, if they're not quite long enough to make full projects, you can use those scraps to add fringe to your wall hangings. Okay, all you have to do is attach it with a lark's head knot and you have beautiful fringe. You can also use it to make tassels and feathers and other projects like that. So please don't feel like you're wasting all your rope because you can always use it again. Now besides using that great formula to figure out a rough estimation of how long your rope should be, there are some more tips that you can apply to this equation. Okay, so another thing to consider is the size of your dowel rod or wood that you're attaching your ropes to. If you're attaching your ropes to a really thick dowel rod or a really big piece of driftwood or whatever it may be, you're going to have to take into account that that lark's head knot is going to eat up a little bit of rope attaching it to that bigger round object. Okay, so always keep that in mind as well. Another thing to consider is the size of your rope. Okay, size does matter in this case. The smaller your rope is, the less rope you're going to need whereas the bigger your rope is, the more rope you're going to need. And that's simply because bigger rope takes up more of the length to tie the same knot that a smaller rope's gonna use. Okay, another thing to consider is how much open space you have in your wall hanging. So if you have a wall hanging that has a lot of straight ropes and big gaps and just an open pattern, you're not gonna need as much rope. Whereas a pattern that has a very close and tight pattern, it's just all knots, there's very little negative space, that's going to need more rope. And some wall hangings might have a lot of negative and closed space. So what I mean by this is a lot of times you might make a cool pattern that kind of goes inwards like a V. And so what that means is those middle ropes are going to be making a lot more knots than the ones on the outer sides of your dowel rod. Okay, so what you can do is you can make the ones in the middle longer than the ones you attach on the ends. And that's just a way to help you save a little rope too. Just a few more tips to help you as a beginner is to write down all your patterns. Okay, so if you are making a wall hanging all on your own, write down how much rope you used every single time. Okay, and then when you finish your project, you can make a note on, I had this much extra rope, or I almost ran out, I wish I had a little more for more French, or maybe you even did run out. So just write all those notes down so in the future you can use those notes to help you be more accurate later on. Another little great tip to remember is when you're making your long chains of square knots or spiral knots or anything like that, those outer cords are the ones that actually tie the knot. So they're going to be the ones that run out of length really, really fast. Those two center cords in your square knots, they don't lose any length. So what you can do is you can attach those cords to your dowel rod or your other project pieces so that the center cords are a lot shorter than those longer cords. I would do the outer cords at least four times the length, but in some projects you might even have to do more. For example, this cool phone cable wrap I did using the spiral knot, I had to use nine times the length of the cable to fully cover it using the spiral knot, okay? So it kind of just depends on how long of a section you are really going to be making to be able to estimate the length needed. So lastly, I just want to remind you guys that macrame is fun, so don't stress too much about the ropes that you need to cut for your projects. I promise the more you do, the more confidence and the more of an intuition you're going to get. Okay, so don't stress too much and just have fun because you can always save your scraps for other projects and you can always add extra rope too if you end up running out. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and inspiring and thank you so much for watching.